All right, then let's do it. What's up, everybody? It's Jess and Jeff here with God Hates Unicorns, and we're here with another very exciting, amazing round of fans and artists we like and support that aren't as good as God Hates Unicorns. And here with us today, we have this unbelievably amazing, talented Sarah Halter. Thank you so much for being here. Josh Morris Halter Cup for you. I'm trying to think that that's not a Halter Cup. That's a crop top. Yes, I see that. <laughs> it's a halter top. I, he doesn't know what a halter top is. I told him he wasn't allowed Wait. to look it up. It's yeah, it goes like behind your neck, like like loop around behind your neck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's so cool. No. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, but sure. <laughs> oh my God. I don't cool. forget what halter top is. <laughs> Yeah, I used to be called that, I don't know, like maybe in middle school, I think I was referred to that the last time, like as like a nickname, you know, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's been, it's been a year. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and now here we are as full grown adults, let's bring it back. <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> I'll allow it for this, for this interview, I'll allow it. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah. This is cool. I've seen like highlights of recent um, God Hates Unicorns podcast and they're pretty entertaining, so. Well, I'm so cool that you're doing it as well locally as a band. I don't know if I've seen. I mean, I've, there there's a few other like features and shows like around here that I've seen, but I know that this thing is it's kind of new. How how long have you been doing it for? Like the the interviews like this. About a two year a year or two. Yeah, maybe a year and a half, two years. But yeah, yeah, it's kind of new and it's fun. I I'm so excited. I love it because I get to talk to people like yourself, um, and meet people like I've gotten to meet so many amazing artists musicians like and it's there's so many people out there doing so much cool stuff oh, and yeah. you just can't get out to everything sometimes oh, like I, I yeah. most of us like we have kids and we each have one so right. but Jeez. it's just like this is a great way to be able to connect and then it's like oh man now you know Sarah Halter's playing, I can make arrangements and make sure I'm there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know, I, like yeah, I've been, like, I, I know, like, like, um, yeah, seeing shows locally, it's been, it's been really tough for me as well, since, like, it, due to, like, my day job schedule, plus, um, recording recently, I had to get all new background tracks ready for the, um, last gig that I had. Which, it was a lot of work, but man, it was so worth it in the end. I, like as a solo performer, I know like with you guys, it's not. I mean, it could be like if you have a gig like the two of you right now, you're looking for guitar and bass. I don't know, could be an option. Like it's it's just fun, but it is a lot of work and whatnot. <laughs> I want to like off the top be like Sarah Halter is the band, and it's <laughs> unbelievable. Like. <laughs> If you like, you, you would never listen to any of your stuff and be like, "This is a solo project." N never. Yeah, never. yeah. I've been I've been told that. I've been told that by a few people. They're like, "Well, who's who's do who does your who does your dirty vocals?" That's like the first question. It's like, "Oh, me." <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I mean, yeah, no offense. Like, I, it's it's funny. Like, it's to me, it's like I I mean, I don't know. Like, I just I just kind of do my thing, and it's like I know that a lot of people, you know, don't do many parts or maybe just do one part in a project or a band which is like you know, I do used to do like that kind of thing too or like just do vocal and guitar not total production um but I don't know I just ever since uh Blue Clutch discontinued I just wanted to you know start go head first into something and it's like well I don't really have like contacts right now that are totally on the same page as me and everybody's kind of in their own thing and I just I haven't found I guess the right like next group that I'll be in like just with what I want to do um but I would be open um, it's not that I'm like closed off to joining a band I would just have to it would have to be a very a good offer I guess <laughs> I don't know <laughs> going forward um well I think a lot of people don't do what you're doing because they fucking can't. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, everybody's on their own different different yeah, things they learn, things they do. Um I, I mean I didn't know that I'd be like recording 
um, like like drum based software. Like I didn't know, like two years ago, I didn't see myself like what what. No, I always worked with the drummer. I always had you know other people do those parts. But no, I <laughs> I just kind of buckled down and got to it. It's amazing, and and I want to talk about those vocals too because I remember the first time I was listening to you because you have these beautiful melodic vocals. Not that they're not like rock and roll, but they're really pretty. And um, and then you do I'll call the dirty vocals. Then those come in, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, they're almost more fun sometimes for me to do than just the same pretty. Like sometimes, you know. I mean, I like them both. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. <laughs> It is awesome. It's a really good mix. It's, it's very symphonic. It is. Yeah. Oh yeah. This um yeah that the last project um speaking of uh, symphonic stuff um I didn't add a lot of I guess synth and symphonic parts because it was kind of like my I mean I, I wanted it to fit but it was also like my first one that I did all those parts for mm -hmm. um though so like. It was this the previous a clockwork destiny release is going to have a little bit less than this upcoming project but it's still going to have um the same amount of like you know guitar driven riffs um clean and dirty vocals um you know more melodic bass parts or group like you know just it's kind of it's i guess in a nutshell a, a step up from a clockwork destiny that was released about a year ago, yeah. And and this next project, if I haven't been, maybe I haven't been clear enough already, it's it's going to be a four song EP, and I, there's no official date yet, but um, it's expected at the end of January or early February, twenty twenty three. Make a date. February second. February second. <laughs> it might be. It might be. I gotta. I'll have to talk to my um. I'll talk to my label about that because I'm on. I'm on um. I'm on a record label for this one, which is really cool. Um, I'm working with Spare Heart Records. Uh, they're based in Everett, Washington. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yep. So whenever um, I I almost have everything done recorded, and after everything's done and gets sent off to mixing and mastering, then a date will be um, figured out. Then so probably within the coming weeks here, because I'm just about done. I just got to record vocals. <laughs> we, we just figured the date out. Yeah, February second. But February second. Uh, <laughs> why? Why February second? Let me ask. We always make. Uh, you know what? Here's the thing. We always tell people what they they should release it. Oh, okay. And if you do what we say, then we extra promote it. We're going to promote you anyways because oh. we love you. But we extra promote it. Extra and promote we it. <laughs> star because they did the thing we wanted them to do. <laughs> Guys, Tara will never forget you, and will yeah. never let it. You did it. You did the thing. Sure oh, cool. They yeah. are. They're coming back. They've been doing some hits. Okay. Yeah, they've been dropping some like owls. Up in I've, I've heard of them. I, I don't know. Like, are they what? Are they are they metal band? Are they rock? Yeah, yeah they're okay. metal. Band. Yeah, I've heard of. I've heard of them or seen them on a flyer for like a local show. It, like in the past, I don't know, a year or so or something. I, I don't know. The pandemic just kind of threw, threw us all off big time. Yeah. <laughs> and after, you know, like, or, you know, on the end. <laughs> so, yeah. It was, it, it was wild. But yeah, That's I think cool. they're going to, we're, we're going to make sure once they, they come back, they, they do keep doing what we tell them to do. But anyways. <laughs> we're their managers. Right? No, we're your managers. Um, what was I going to say? So you just had a show at the Government Center, right? Penn Brewery. Penn Brewery. Why Penn Brewery, do you yeah. not know that place? I remember. That's you know what? I go to that place. There's actually a video of me because our friends, uh, Hemlock for Chocolates, were there. And they asked yes. Me and I yes. Asking my daughter, do you want to go to Penn Brewery? And she's like, no, I do not. I was like, okay. Oh, no. You missed it. You missed it. Uh, they, yeah. Their set was um, after mine, actually, and it was awesome. It was really awesome. Notice it looked like that was a really good time. There was a really great lineup. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was. It was a great show. I got there. Um, I didn't get to see like the very beginning uh, of like the brew house stage, uh, but I saw some of Old Games set. They went before me, and then I played 
then Hemlock for Socrates, and then we went up to the upstairs stage to see if you had the metal bands after that, or like that, like the, you know, the full groups. Yeah. yeah. Ray Walker and, oh, what was the other one? Ray Walker. Contagion something. Oh gosh, what was their name? I certainly don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a really cool. Yeah, it was anyway. It was a great set. There were uh, there's a decent crowd up there and like a small mosh pit happening upstairs. I love that. I the the energy that the city has anymore. I feel like yeah. Pittsburgh has mosh pit at a brewery energy. Yeah, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was sick. It was really, I um. Definitely when I started to play, um, the first heavier song that I played was Clockwork Destiny. And <laughs> my girlfriend was watching and she said, oh my gosh, like after, after the performance, she's like, as soon as you kicked up the vocals, this lady was tapping her card. Because <laughs> it was in the brew house, like she was just like older or like middle-aged person. Oh I, I, I was just I, I didn't see it happen, but I'm like, oh my Get me God. out of this place. <laughs> I I did not see it happen, but I I was I just busted out laughing because I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so some people had that reaction to me, and then there were like other people there that were like really 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 into it so yeah it was great yeah and um hemlock for socrates they they both were there they enjoyed to like we saw each other's sets too so, mm -hmm. so yeah but yeah it was great got some uh really good feedback and it was the first show that i did with full backing tracks as well um yeah. it went exceptionally well overall i can't wait for the next one i'm not really sure when it's gonna be uh but i'm as soon as i wrap up this EP recording here, I will definitely be putting my feelers out there to get some more for end of the year or like early 2023. Sure. Yeah, we're going to try hard. I feel like most bands, us included, kind of just like we don't focus on shows as much as we do in like writing, wrapping things up, getting things ready for next year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of work. Um, booking, lining up, like uh, communicating, trying to set something up at venues, like it, take, it, it takes a lot of energy. I know like, I mean, that's not the one thing that I'm like, I mean, I used to be really good at it with my band, but now that I'm like juggling up all this other stuff, like it's really hard to like be your own, like, uh, what is it? Book, book manager, booking agent, book, booking oh. agent, I guess, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, sometimes like to think like, okay, I want to reach out, but like, I don't really know this band that well, or I don't know, maybe I should just cold call people in 2023 sets. Oh yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Always so, way to go, yeah. yeah. We, met, we met a guy just who was doing that from Wisconsin and that's the way to do it. Like, and he ended up, he was a stranger that ended up staying at the house here and he didn't oh. kill us. His name was Hella. He was really nice. And it was just like, yeah, he was just like, I'm trying to, I'm doing a tour. And I saw you guys in Pittsburgh. And it was like, yeah, let's do something, new yeah. friend. Yeah, I've met countless people over the years doing that kind of stuff. Like yeah. John Siren, one of them, like back in the MySpace days, he reached out to me when I, when I was doing my, other, my previous band. And he was touring. He was like, hey, want to play some shows? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. And I think that if you reach out to a band and their reaction isn't, yeah, let's play some shows or, you know what, shoot, I can't right now, but I'll, I'm going to direct you to this this person, this person, or this person. If yeah. it's not one of those reactions, then you don't want to deal with that band anyways. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's be the right, yeah, right, right situation, right setup. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I know like shows are definitely, um, back and going like around everywhere and around Pittsburgh but like I think for a while like everything was still a little bit like um you know let's get ease back into this you know I guess whether or not you declare the pandemic over or whatever but it's still like you know with turnouts and mm. just situations sometimes like um I know there was like I, I saw like I don't know when was it maybe over the spring I don't know I've lost 
total track of time. But over the spring, I think it was like you would see like an ad for a show or something. And then it was like, sorry, we have to reschedule. One of our members got um, COVID or whatever. So that's still a real possibility. Um, yeah, we, we ended up canceling many shows in the last year or two over COVID. We did. And I'm uh -huh. wondering, like, when is it going to be? And I'm not saying it should be. Yeah. It's just a question. Like, when is it going to be like, oh, yeah, you have COVID? And, you know, oh, well, like, yeah. like, like with everything else, because I feel like that's where we're headed, that yeah. things don't shut down anymore when you have yeah. it. They tell you to come with a mask. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's just like, I don't know, man. I I don't know anything about anything. I'm just like, um, I'm sick right now. I've been sick for a week, but it's not COVID. But this is like worse than a lot of people's COVID experiences. So yeah, so like you know, go go be in public, do what you need to do. You know, <laughs> you drove me here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, I know like that with all the summer, no, I'm sorry, it's summer, late, what is it, early fall holds and everything, you know, it's, there's a lot going around right now. Um, but yeah, I know like I had COVID back in what was it, May, yeah, May 25th or so. And I didn't, I, oh yeah, I did have a gig book that I did have to cancel. I was supposed to be the um, feature at uh, Mr. Small's Fun House, like just to do acoustic. Oh um, yeah, that night, and I was I, I got back from it was a family gathering, and my sister texted me. And she was like, "Jeremy, her husband, he um tested positive that day," and I was like, "Oh no!" And I was already starting to feel kind of weird, but I wasn't sure, and I was like, "I better cancel this for sure." I'm glad I did because yeah, the next day, it was yeah full positive. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it's it, it was no fun, but yeah, I got got through. It. Yeah. And that's I, I think that everybody's really understanding too. Nobody's like, oh fuck yeah. those guys, they cancel their set because they had COVID, you know. Yeah, yeah. you're acting like that. That's not. That's just silly. <laughs> yeah, we had to cancel Millwall Music Fest this year. We did have to cancel Mill. That was poop. Oh Millville. Oh no. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> that was around, yeah. A lot of a lot of stuff was going on then. Yeah, that was around the time. Yeah, it was really good moment. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Did That's you guys have a Deutsch Town? Yeah, we had the best Deutsch Town experience ever. Yeah. So that totally made up for it. It, yeah. it was worth having. Great. No Millville. Yeah, we had one of the main stages. We had hundreds of people there watching us. And wow. It just the stars aligned. The stars aligned. That's great. On that. Yeah. I did. Yeah, I do remember seeing that it was like somebody wore a unicorn costume, or was that a later show? Yeah. Okay, okay. His name and that was, was crazy. He like I didn't know what he was planning. He mm. just tackled us on stage, and he picked me up and threw me on the floor. I couldn't believe it. It was so hilarious. <laughs> and I thought that's the only them to be in the city paper too, because they were they were there for that. And they're like, it was such a, such a fun. Cool. It was fun. So yeah, we we aren't crying over Melville because Joyce Town really. That's a <laughs> good, good experience there. My experience was really good, but I, I played at um Allegheny City Brewing. I just did acoustic. I didn't do my whole electric. Okay. Um, I thought you went too. Yeah, yeah. I I might I might have been playing around the same time you guys did, or either like was maybe if you played Friday, I I was probably either working or getting ready or something. Um, yeah, I was near the main stage, walked past it like several times, and I didn't. Yeah, unfortunately, I missed it. <laughs> but, I missed like everybody because I had my daughter there and she's five, and the, the oh. indoor ones, even though she had her headphones on, the indoor places were so noisy. I was just like, oh, let's yeah. just sit up here and eat hot dogs and play with these ants. <laughs> <laughs> She had a um a stick she found and she was putting French fries on the stick oh, and picking wow. up the ants with the French fries. <laughs> I'm like you're you're just having your own fun here today. She's afraid of flies. She is afraid. But my ants were on me. Do you see that picture of that blown up ant face? It's like really magnified and it's the ant's face. I'm gonna send it to you. It's so no, I, I don't think I don't think I've seen that. It's like the grossest yeah. thing in the world. Like if you thought ants were okay, like <gasps> ready. 
they're not. <laughs> you have to send it. Yeah, maybe I maybe I did in passing, and I just I don't know. Like a lot of things don't gross me out. I don't know. I'm very like oh that. Oh, that, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, send it to me. Yeah, please do. Or screen share or whatever. I don't know. You can do it later. I'll the ant. I'll I'll add the ant to like the. I'll send it to you later, but I'll add it in the video here, just oh, like okay. so you can see how terrible it is, and everybody can. Be cool, but if it's exposed off with the fungus. Yeah, oh, the fungus. You don't have to get it. But have you ever seen those ants that get that fungus? <laughs> oh, excuse me. The fungus that gets in their brain and then they clung, 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 and then they latch on, and then this fungus. <laughs> oh, bless you. Let's do it. Yeah. They inhale the spores and they like become like zombie ants and they yeah. climb up a tree and then they like, they, like burst out of their head. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen that. Wow. That is wild. Wow. Yeah, it, it only affects a few of the colony, and it's it's very very bizarre, and it's very freaky because you're like, what if that happened to us? What if it happened? Yeah, like, <laughs> I just the start with fungus. Oh, sorry. Yeah, like like a like a fungal infection like got out of control, maybe something like that. <laughs> just to take care of your athlete's feet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, or you might have fungus come out of your head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's just yeah, so much going on. I I hope the cold gets better. <laughs> so Thank you. Does, yeah. I was. I, it's, 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 it's not. It's, oh, I, no. So there's there, it's a new show on Netflix about anthrax. Oh yeah. And I am like, oh man, I'm just like put that on. I'm yelling at the TV. <laughs> yelling at. <laughs> like. <I can> relate. <laughs> <laughs> he gave away the ending. He gave away the ending that we all knew for years. <laughs> like it's not like hey, we just found out where the anthrax came from. We've yeah. known this, but he did spoil the ending of the show. Um, so thanks, Josh. Um, <laughs> what is it? It's a you said it's a um documentary or movie? Yeah, it's a documentary. Like a documentary. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you're the, the anthrax mail stuff from Knock Down 11. Yeah, so right, like, right. Yeah, about that. Yeah. I swear, I've seen, I don't think I've seen that documentary. I've, I've watched like plenty of videos, like, you know, those YouTube videos people make about like where it came from. And some of them were definitely a little, uh, you know, conspiracy. What is it? Conspiracy. Yeah. yeah, conspiratorial type thing. Yeah, not I didn't didn't buy any of it, but I yeah, I've seen seen some stuff about that. <laughs> My favorite documentary on Netflix is Women Build Your Sex Room. That was so good. Oh, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard that one. I've heard that one. I've heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like that, that like little old lady who was like walking around and building people dungeons. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it was like a little old English lady. She would just show up and like, well, what are you, what are, what are you and your partner into? And she'd like bring out like floggers and like glyphs like and stuff like that. And the whole thing, sex swings it, and all. <laughs> yeah, it, it was like it was like a property manager show, like the, the yeah. twin show or like that. But it was like building a sex right. room. Wow, it's awesome. Amazing, amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, I wish I just had more free time recently. Like, I want to watch all this stuff. Like, I, I have days like. It, it's I don't know going back to like work and music and stuff I'm like I'm so like out of the loop when it comes to like super popular like uh you know Netflix or who's any of those series because like, I just I don't have the attention span and time to watch them <laughs> and I feel really sad because like a lot of them are so um you know people really like them and it's like kind of hard to relate about those things but like but that sounds so cool like I just want to watch this lady build people yeah. dungeons. Like that, that sounds excellent. And she's like 70 years old. She just like comes to the house and she's like, wow. yeah. she's like, do you like flogging? <laughs> and it's like brilliant. And you're just like, yes. We'll do this. <laughs> and, then, and if they don't like, it's, uh, flogging is a big, big theme for it too. It's weird. Yeah. Huh. That's probably what she's into. 
Yeah. Um, if they're not in a flogging, she takes them to get flogged to see oh, if wow. like she would actually enjoy it, so she could end up oh. going to a flogging station. Is this wow. right? I'm, I'm, you know, I, I just realized like she's just like forcing <laughs> flogging on everyone. She this is. is the show. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Basking with like handcuffs, uh, whips, and what you know. Like, yeah. And then all the time it's like I've never tried. I've never tried flogging before. They're, they're, they're taking some word and they're like, "Here's some white flogging. <laughs> if you like that, I'll build you. A, I'll build you a flogging." Build, stick. build you to it. Oh my goodness! Wow. She must have like, hey, like capital on her something. As long as everybody's, you know, okay with trying it, it's cool. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean for sure. It's just like one yeah. pushing hard on these couples. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just like yeah, it's yeah. Oh, that's, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just saying it's hard to like find find time for yeah that kind of thing for me. Yeah, <laughs> to find time for flogging. Yeah, finding time for that. <laughs> let alone TV show. <laughs> let alone music. Let alone everything else. But yeah, I, I guess the question. I don't know. Like how how do how do you? I guess it's you're 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 together. Your family and children involved how do you make time how do you budget time for everything like what what are some ways that you do that plus what's <laughs> the great shows like 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 the 70 year old vlogging lady <laughs> how do you have time for that I, i'm just I'm, I'm curious you know <laughs> it's a it's a it's a tight rope it's a tight rope yeah and really it's just like for me i've kind of cut out like like most like I don't really watch a lot of TV unless I'm sick. Um, I certainly don't read. <laughs> like, I'll listen to books on, on tape while I'm driving. Well, oh, it's yeah. just like, there's just no time for everything, anything. It's just like constantly like, ah, gotta get this and gotta do this, gotta make lunch. And it's like, yeah, wow. I the best parent I remember to plug in the computer. You know, <laughs> I charge the phone, and then you have work, and then you have, you know, you know what I'm doing with the band, and then writing, and then all the other crap. I just, I, it's all held together by like very thin threads. Very thin threads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But if, but if anything is important enough, though, you always find the time. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, you always find it's important in my yeah. and like with, with like scheduling and stuff. Like it, it's it's you know like we like, we we practice, usually practice once a week, gig once a month, and she's writing for several different you know magazines and and websites, yeah. and it's all it's a very big undertaking, you know. But you find the time if it's important. Mm -hmm. And yeah, luckily we could, like we, we, we could have uh, we practice at my house. And, so with kids and stuff, it's easy because like if my son's home, he could be here for it. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's a lot easier, you know, for stuff like that. But yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's important you find the time and then you you manage it as best you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, that's that's about how I try to do things as well. Pretty much. I mean, yeah, I don't have any children. I have a partner girlfriend alice she's yeah she's she's in the other room but um yeah we live on the hill <laughs> god meets unicorn says hi <laughs> um but yeah uh just you know balancing personal life and then plus day job um my current day job i know i don't i don't like to make this super public but like it's totally cool people come visit me i work at yin's coffee um oh. on, the, on the north side yeah, I work there for my day job about three to four shifts a week, about. And um, yeah, the rest of the time is just trying to stay healthy, stay sane, and uh, obviously music <laughs> in there. I like to work at music on music at nights, mostly, <laughs> like in the evening hours. I don't know. Like, I mean, some days, like, I'll get up and I'll do stuff, but I'm, I'm more, I, I, I'm productive usually between, like, I don't know, no, eight or nine until about 11 night when it comes to that kind of thing and i'm definitely not an early bird thank goodness they schedule me um for the closing shifts most days because yeah i'm not an early riser 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the exact opposite. I'm, I'm more productive at like five in the morning. Yeah, uh, but some people are. I, I, like, yeah, especially with like kids and stuff like that. Like you, like you find the time. And, like, yeah. For me, like, like having like morning coffee is like waking up two hours before he's getting up. Yeah. And like you know, thinking about stuff and doing stuff and like you know getting that done where it's like. Because at the end of the day, after work, I'm just like, yeah, I'm not doing shit. That's fine. Right. Yeah. Sometimes after work, I'm just like, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Or I'm, this happened today. Oh, like, it's, yeah. And, like, I don't know if, if you work with people um, at, like, at a job. Like, it does take a lot of, like, I don't know, soul energy. <laughs> yes, it does. It's a lot of soul energy, emotional energy. And, yeah. I mean, most days are fine. But, yeah. I mean, occasionally they have to deal with, like, so, like especially in the location like on the north side a lot of times like they you got to function as like a security guard you have to tell people like yeah you're taking too long in the bathroom or people like i don't know there's there have been like instant people just are not not in the right mind come in there and they go off for like no apparent reason tell them they have to leave and don't come back i mean it doesn't happen often, but it it's like it's not just like pouring coffee or making up a latte. There's a lot more. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, making the time is very important. It's one. It's it's one thing that I've really been like focusing on ever since I've gone solo like this. Because like you, you like right now. I mean, other than um, like the record label support, I I still have to do basically everything in my project. Um, well, we're very excited to hear it. Yeah. I'm done for you. But I'm here. This is crazy. <laughs> well, Jess is dying of anthrax right now. So <laughs> don't die. Don't die, Jess. I, I, I've, hit it, I've, hit it, I've hit it the antidote somewhere in this house. But she'll have to find it. it. <laughs> so wherever she has, but I want to thank you for coming on today, and this is brilliant. Uh, February second, yeah. February second. <laughs> that can be a, yeah, a tentative, a tentative deadline right now. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll have all the links down below for yeah. for, for your Spotify, for your you have, you have a Bandcamp as well. Yeah, Bandcamp, Spotify. I'm basically everywhere. I know um, in my Instagram, I have my Bandcamp listed um it depends on what page you go on to my if you go to my website there's like everything there i think my tiktok has my link tree which also has links to everything as well so yeah Post yeah, pop, pop, pop it all down below. yeah and uh thank you very much there for coming on thank you thank you for having me joshua it was great to great to talk to you and jess i hope i just feel better Okay. I'm not dead yet. Thank I'm, you so much. I can't I'm wait to see you. Yes, it was great talking to you both. I need to come see a show, and uh, yeah, we should collab or do something in the in the near future. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Playing a show would be great. Um, again, like I know you're. If you need help, like in the studio with a guitar part solo or anything, like yeah, let me know. I'd be happy to. Yeah, yeah. 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 Be amazing! Oh my goodness! Thank you so much. Thank you. This is going to be extremely entertaining and and, <laughs> and uh, have a great evening. And uh, we'll be in touch for sure. Bye. Bye.